right, so I'm out in the driveway this morning doing some work on the kayak. Um, big picture project for today. If you've seen my videos, if you've watched my videos before, uh, you've seen my Pro Angler, and you've seen I usually have a Lowrance uh, HDS 7 uh, Gen 2 Touch um, mounted right here. Well, I'm moving away from the, uh, the HDS 7 Gen 2 specifically. Uh, that's the bow unit off my bass boat. Um, and I'm going to be putting this, which is the brand new uh, Lowrance Elite 5 Ti. Um, and this is the version that has the uh, total scan. So I'm getting uh, regular sonar, down imaging, and side imaging as well. Well, uh, I would have just gone with the, the uh, total scan transducer, but the total scan transducer is not compatible with the Gen 2 um, HDS 7. So rather than going up to another HD, buying another HDS3 for a bunch of money, um, or HDS Gen 3 for a bunch of money, I went with that. And uh, the cool part is I found this company called Burley Pro out of Australia, and they make an adapter that's best suited for the Pro Angler that allows you to put the Total Scan transducer down below the bottom of the hull um, using the, the Lowrance Ready Spot on the uh, on the Pro Angler, uh, and because it's down below the hull now, you've got your full side imaging. So uh, this video will be going over the install, uh, primarily on the install, and the uninstall of the old system and the install of the new system using the Burley Pro. So first things first, we'll go ahead and take the old system apart. And the cool part is, pretty much the only thing I'm going to need is a Phillips screwdriver. The only problem going with the new unit is uh, it uses a different power wiring setup. So um, I was going to take this apart anyway to replace the transducer, but uh, this is the Hobie through through hull that's, that comes standard on the Pro Angler. Um, I'll be taking this piece apart, taking this out to uh, unwire the transducer and replace the power wire. So let's go ahead and take care of this. And this is one of the more difficult parts of the install because I've got to reach up into the hull here from the front into the side here because there's a wing nut on the back of this that holds this whole thing together. So, Long arms are an advantage here, but big hands aren't. Alright, so wing nut comes off the back. There's this gasket here, and then this is the bushing for through hole ground. So I'll take that off, make sure we don't lose that. I'm going to be reusing that, so make sure I don't lose that. Pull this gasket off. Pull these plugs out of here. Pull these plugs out. Settle that off the side. Undo my spiral wrap. Alright, so first thing out will be the power wire. So here's the wing nut that goes on the inside of the hull. Um, so fishing these wires through this thing is a real pain too. And actually what I'm ending up doing is I'm actually going to take this out backwards. Take that plug out. So I've actually got it out of the way so I can take this out. There you go. Alright, so the next thing we'll be doing... So next up we'll get down in our 
down in here. Put these tack boxes out. Remove this tray. Get it out of the way. Because our transducer wiring comes through here. And it's going to have to come back through here for the rest of the next part, too. All right, so this is where our transducer wiring comes out. It comes up through the scupper here, and then comes out, uh, goes into the hull right here, and another one's through through hull grommets. I've got to go through here into to here. Uh, so once again, long arms are a help, but uh, big hands aren't necessarily a help. So I got to reach all the way back through here to get to the wing nut on this to disassemble. So I got to reach all the way through here to get to this wing nut. So. So we got the wing nut off. We're gonna pull this grommet out. Push this cable all the way out. Before we do that, we gotta get the nut off this cable. here. Alright, so we got the nut off, nut off the cable. And the cable And now we can undo this piece. So now we're going to take the uh, build scupper mount off. Need any of this? So we're sure this out. All right, so here's the new transducer we're mounting. Um, so as you can see, it definitely won't fit in there, um, and that's where the Burley Pro comes into play. So let's go ahead and unbundle this thing. All right, so in the box with the uh, with the Lowrance is this little um, hardware pack. So out of this hardware pack. Um, what we need is these little machine screws, four of these little machine screws, and those are going to attach the transducer to this plate. So let's go ahead and take care of that. All right, so we've got this this uh, plate or this transducer now bolted onto the adapter plate, and uh, now we got to put the whole thing on the boat itself. All 
All right, so the nose fastener here, this fastener will actually be uh, the original, one of the originals. Hopefully the screw's long enough, we'll find out. But the whole assembly goes like this. Alright, so we're done under the boat now. Let's see what else we got. Alright, so first up here we gotta fish this down into the boat, or down into the hull, pull it out over here, uh, out of this hatch. And then once we got out of this hatch, we gotta put the put all the other components on. So first thing before I forget that has to be done. Okay, so the assembly order for this is, is really important. So before we go in, cannot forget this grommet. Um, this little gasket is basically what makes that seal watertight. So it's got a flange side, it's got a flat side. The flat side will go against the hull, the flange side will be facing out. So because this is going in this way, it needs to go on flange side first onto this wire. So the way this thing goes together is this grommet's going to face this way. We'll split this grommet, run it around the cord. Oops. First things first, let's go ahead and slide this cord on here like this. It's going to go on this way. Put the grommet on the, on the cable. And then this grommet's got to come in from the very bottom and the round side goes in. So round side of the grommet here is towards the inside and this has to come from all the way to the bottom and getting the angle just right is part 
part of the trick to putting this one together. Nice and tight. All right. So there's how we want this thing to sit. We want it to sit nice and flush. Slide this over so we don't lose it. And now for the really fun part. Okay, this nut will sit on the back side and threads on here this way. So we've got to make sure that when we run it over the core over the cable, we run it the correct direction. It's going this way, it's gotta go through this way. And it's a, these are fairly tight fit. This is about the small, about the biggest thing you can fit through one of these nuts. this all the way through the cord, down the cable. So we'll seat that. Snug it up as much as you can. Alright, so that's on there nice and snug now. We've got a watertight seal. And we'll feed the rest of the slack down in with the transducer just so we don't have the slop laying out here. That's the transducer install. Alright, so our power wiring will be a lot more simple. Um, I use an SAE plug, so just a nice simple plug that come with covers. Uh, I use a battery tender to charge my uh, my battery for my fish finder. Uh, so I'm going to put this on the power wire for the Lowrance unit and this will end up down under the bow where my battery mount is. So uh, we'll go ahead and make this connector and then we'll run all the wiring together. Alright so it appears they were nice enough to ship my unit out without a, uh, without a power wire which okay great. Uh, the good news is the, uh, the pin out and everything for my old power wire is exactly the same, so we'll go ahead and use the old wire to build the, uh, to rebuild the connector. So all we need is the uh, positive and negative here. Strip these back. Set up nice. I'm using heat shrinking crimp connectors here. And if you're going to do this, do yourself a huge favor and use crimping pliers. So a proper set of terminal crimpers make this so much easier and works so much better.
good connection. So strip this out. All right, so the important thing to remember with these SAE connectors, and I learned this the hard way the first time I wired one of these up, is the color coding or the marking on the wiring and on the terminal is if you were wiring this to a battery to use as a charging lead. Since we're actually using this as a power lead, we actually want to wire it backwards. So coming off the battery, when you look at these, the covered connector is the, um, is the positive, this is the negative. On this one, since this is a cold terminal, this is going to be the positive, and the covered one will be the negative. So the wire with the white line on it in our case will be, is going to be the, the, connected to the black wire. All right, so now we've got a good mechanical connection. And now, like I said, I used heat shrink ones here, so I'm going to use a, maybe use a lighter. I'm going to take this inside and use a lighter to shrink. All right, so our finished connection looks like that, nice and shrunk down. So this is nice and waterproof and uh, suitable for, for our purposes now. So let's go ahead and start routing our wiring in the boat. All right, so I've routed my wiring all the way up into my bow. Remember, this is gonna sit uh, against the hull this way. This cable's gonna come out this way into the, uh, into the cockpit. So if I don't drop it, we'll run this cable through here. Now I'll show you why I built this cable the way I did to begin why I built this cable first rather than doing the connection afterwards. All right, so as we saw when we took everything apart, stuff didn't fit very well through here. So this wire is actually going to run. We're going to route this wire first through the hull. Uh, and, then this, and then we'll feed this through inside the hull. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. So we'll just make sure. about that much out, that'll work. Run this through. That way. Make sure it goes through that way. And now we'll fish this cable. This one's kind of a challenge to get around the corner. Got our wire here. Pull out how much I want. That's about how much I'm planning on using there. Put our gasket over. Remember, flange side out. Feed these wires down. Get them about the same length. That'll sit there nicely. Got our little grommet here. So that this one will be in the small wire, this one will be in the big wire. So I got my links about the same. I've got my cord, my cables on the scrummet. Pass this through. Our 
right in here. Kind of keep them in the same order. All the way from the bottom. Or Wiggle the cables so this thing sits flush. It's, it's helpful to remember that this thing, come, these cables come out at an angle like this. So it just makes it a whole lot easier uh, to uh, to wiggle this thing into place so it's nice and tight. And then when you go to place this thing along the uh, hull or onto the hull, um, just take into consideration which direction you want the wires to go, how you want the wires to come out. So I want my wires to come out this way, stick out towards the back because that's where the, uh, the fish finder is going to mount. So we'll run our grommet up here, or our gasket up here. We'll slide this down in, put that in place. And then just like the other one, we're gonna fiddle the fish the wire, feed the washer all the way down the wire. So we got that tightened down. That should be a nice water resistant seal now. And now we got our cables back here. All right, so the next part's actually to put together the mount for the for the fish finder itself. So um, I'm a huge fan of ram mounts. So I'll be using mounting this with a ram mount. So I'm using a one inch ball ram mount. It's a nice small unit, uh, so I can get away with a one inch ball. Whereas I had the uh, one and a half inch ball before. So let's use a uh, ram H rail ball here. And then this is a quick detach bracket for the uh, for the Lorance unit itself. This is specific to the Lorance um, Elite units. So I'll mount that up there and let's go get the unit itself. Alright, so this unit is made to clip in and out of this quick detach bracket. You've got a quick detach, a quick detach handle right here. So alright, so we got our unit mounted here. Um, and even with just the one inch ball, this thing is uh, is really sturdy, so it's not going anywhere. Um, on, a, on a bass boat or something like that, I might go with the one and a half inch mount for this thing, because uh, you'll bounce around a lot more, but uh, but on the kayak, you know, I'm not worried about doing 60 mile an hour across the chop, I'm not worried about this mount breaking, so um, if I want to move this thing around, it's just a nice, adjust it where I want it, if I need it down out of the way, I can park it right here. Uh, I can go with a longer a longer arm here or a shorter arm as I see fit. Um, and there are, there are several other things you can do with this. So it's just a really versatile mount. I really like these ram mounts a lot. So that's our uh, physical mounting. Go ahead and make our electrical or make our power connections here. All right. So we got power. Pick up our transducer. Got our transducer hooked up. And I'll zip tie or reloom this later, probably put two zip ties on it. And uh, let's go get the battery. All right, now for the moment of truth, let's go ahead and uh, power this thing on.
All right, there we go. It's like, all right, so there was the install on our Lawrence Elite 5 Ti, my Hobie Pro Angler 14. Uh, if you like the video, give me a thumbs up. Uh, next up, the next video will be a uh, me taking that transducer that I uninstalled from this one from the uh, HDS and uh, installing, doing a trolling motor install on my uh, Minkota 4 tracks. So, anyway, until next time, cheers and tight lines.